So now we will start part two with Python language basics. First of all, what exactly is GeoPython? We have seen and run Python macros, and we even added a variable. But apparently, we did not really mention GeoPython. GeoPython is an interpreter for Python 3.6, so that any regular Python script should run in Geodict. However, GeoPython gives access to Geodict specific functions. They are called the GeoPython Application Program Interface, short API. They all can be recognized by the prefix GD. In fact, we've already seen Geodict specific functions. The first one was the GD run CMD that is used to run the commands which are saved from the user interface. This function was used to run the fiber geo creation command to generate the fiber structure. The second API function we've seen is the GD MSG box, which shows a nice message dialog. To start with Python, we suggest to record a Python macro in Geodict, as we have done together. Then we can use variables and vary macro for parameter studies. In the following, we show you some useful Python language basics. Um, they will help you to make parametric macros even more useful. I will type them together with you in the editor. So open the editor again um, and open a new file. File, new, and we will save it as um, output um, file. Therefore, click on file, save as. Um, again, make sure that it's in a pure, in your product folder and call it output um, pi. If you don't have an plus plus, you have to. Um, uh, choose the Python um, as a type, then click on Save. The first Python language basic that I will show you is text output. This can be very useful for debugging. Imagine, for example, a Python script does not produce the expected results. Then it would be good to know where exactly the error happens. By printing the intermediate results, it can, uh, this can be found out. In this workshop, we will show you two possibilities to print text, text output. In this workshop, we will show you two possibilities for this purpose. The first one um, uh, is a geodic specific function. So it starts with gd um, dot and then msg box. Um, this stands for message box. And then inside the braces, um, we enter the, the output. In this case, it uh, will be a string. So, for example, head world. So, um, a string is always uh, marked with uh, quotation marks in um, Python. It can also be um, double quotation marks. Um, but you have to be sure that it's the same in the uh, beginning and in the end. You can also um, output um, integers like 42. Um, so you can output most basic Python values like strings and integers and floating points. Um, and this um, function will um, show a message box um, with the um, message that is inside here, the braces, and you have an OK button um, to close the dialog again. The second um, one is uh, a Python command, which is called print. And here, as done before with the uh, message box, um, the content um, that will be printed um, has to be inside the braces. Um, this content will be printed, printed into the console of Geodict. So here again, we will print Hello World. Again, make sure that you have um, a quotation mark in the front and in the end. So click Save. And go back to the macro execution control by um, to Geodict and then macro 
execute macro script. Click on refresh and here the output macro appears. So it ha don't have parameters, so um, the parameters button is grayed out. Um, and here no pre preview um, is available because um, it is, um, has Python syntax um, um, beyond of the um, normal uh, duty commands. So we click on run. And here the first message box appears. If we click in the, in the box, then here the countdown stops. Um, at the end of the countdown, the bo box would be uh, closed um, automatically. So you see here the, the first um, message. We click OK. And then the second message appears with the 42. Click OK again. And for the third, third message, we have to look at the console it's here in the in the bottom of the Geodict um, user user interface. To unfold the console, click on the double arrow here in the in the right, and you can his, um, see here also the two message box, um, which is always the three lines here. Um, and here, um, the single line is from the print command, the hello world. So if you want to have text output, but you do not want to interrupt the macro execution with message dialogues, the print command would be preferable. So next I will show you how um, variables work in Python. Um, therefore we open a new file again, with file new. And we will save this file as variables. So again, make sure that you save the macro in your project folder and um, as a Python file. And click Save. Any type of data can be stored into a variable. Uh, we had the example earlier of defining the parameter called gdsvp. All of the parameters declared like this in the variable section automatically appear as a Python variable in your macro. They will have the value given in the user interface. Variables can also be defined wherever it is needed in the script. We only need a name and some value. Of course, then they do not appear in the user interface. But that is not necessary for each variable. We also had the example of a variable of the type before. The Python dictionary, where the parameters for the generation of the fiber structure were saved, was also assigned to a variable. It was called fibergeocreateArx1. This was needed to uh, execute the command for the fiber structure generation. So a variable is defined um, the moment it is first assigned. Um, so exa for example, if we call variable A and assign the value 42, then from now on um, A is 42. We can show it with a message box. So now we only have to um, write the name of the variable inside the braces, and then 42 will be displayed. Um, also, arithmetics uh, would work as, as expected. So for example, if we call the second variable b and assign the value a plus 1, then from now on, um, B will be 43. You can also show it in the message box. Also, uh, the value of a variable can be replaced by a new value. So if you now um, assign a new value to A, then from now on, A will, would be another value. But for the assigning process, you can also use the old A, for example, A times 2. Then here on the right side, a is uh, still the 42, but from now on, A would be 84. So we also will output this in the message box. And the last one will be a string. So we call it S and we assign the string hello world again. Okay. 
and we will also output this. And we will save it. And go back to the macro execution control and click refresh. And here it appeared. As the output um, file, it has no parameters and you have no preview. But when you click on run, then you see here the 42, which was the A. The second one is the B, which dwell with the value of 43. And then the new A, as is 84. And last but not least, the string, hello world. So now we want to take care of the issue that in our parameter study, all structures were saved under the same name, FiberGeoGDR. Um, and we had to rename it um, for each generation. Um, so our goal is to make the parameter value part of the result file name. We uh, find the file name in the parameters dictionary. So therefore, we have to go back to our workshop 2 file and then search for the result file name. Here it is. For me, it's line um, 147. And here we have the result for Fiber Geo GDR. Um, so to achieve our goal, we uh, will start with an F in front of the string. This stands for format. So now we can um, format the string um, as we want to, uh, with, um, with, for example, the variable values. So um, now variables can be um, inserted in a string with curly brackets. Only inside these brackets um, add the variable name. So to make it look a little bit nicer, in the end, add an underscore and then the value would be a little bit more um, split it from the from the name. So click on save. And if you now go back to the macro execution control and highlight the workshop 2 and click on parameters and make sure that you've all um, that you have still the list 10 40 70. Click OK and click on Run. So now we are not asked to, um, to rename it, or to backup it or override it. Um, because now if we go back to our project folder, we see here um, with the underscore the three new result folders, and here are the three new result files, and you see that automatically here the so the volume percentage value is um, added to the result file name, as was all our goal. So next, um, we want to add a second variable um, to workshop to our workshop two pi macro, because um, the goal would be to use um, very macro now to create structures not only with different solid volume percentage, but also with varying fiber diameters. So go back to our workshop two pi, um, saved under a new name. With file save as workshop three if we don't overwrite our other um, macro files. So again, make sure that you save the macro in your project folder and um, as a Python file. Click save. And now to the job. Um, first we could uh, change our description. Um, already the parameters solid volume percentage and fiber diameter and then here in the variables section uh, change the number of variables to 2 and then copy here the variable 1 make sure that you have um, the closing um, curly bracket here inside, but not the last one, because this one belongs to the um, to the whole variables block. We only want the variable one. Then copy it. 
and insert it here right below it but in front of the last curly bracket. Change it to variable 2 and the name of this variable would be FD which stands for fiber diameter and the label would of course be fiber diameter. And it's still at a floating point so double is okay. The unit um, will be in meter which is the default here below in the dictionary as we will see later. Um, and as a tooltip we can enter um, fiber diameter for material 1 and as a built-in default value we will take the value which is in the dictionary below we will see later the um, 1 e minus 5. Um, this means that um, uh, the fiber diameter would be by default 1 times 10 to the power of minus 5 meter, which, um, which are 10 micrometers. So we will um, simply delete the check um, line because it's optional and uh, not so necessary for this case. Um, yes, so now we, um, so now the, the new variable would appear in the uh, user interface, but we also have to add it to the dictionary here below. The default fiber structure in Duty consists um, of two fiber types. Um, and the first one would be described in the um, generator 1 section and the second in the generator 2 section. Uh, we only want to change the um, fiber diameter of the, the first um, fiber type, so we have to look for the generator 1, um, which is here in line uh, 171 for me. Uh, so here we have some information about the material of this um, first fiber type, um, the per percentage of um, fibers uh, with this fiber type, which is 50%, um, so 50% are fiber type 1 and 50% are fiber type 2, um, which type of fibers, here yeah, the infinitive uh, circular fiber generator, so it are uh, infinite uh, circular fibers. Um, and here is what we need the diameter distribution. And by default, it's only um, a constant um, constant value for, for all um, fibers of this type. So all fibers have a diameter of 10 micrometers. So we have to change here this um, value to GDFD. And of course, we also have to change the result file name again. So you yeah, also add gdfd inside curly brackets. And then we can save this file. Now we can see the benefits of adding a second parameter to the macro. We can now vary both parameter values automatically. So go back to um, the macro execution control, click refresh, and the workshop 3 appears. You still see the fiber geo command, and if you click on parameters, um, now you have the, the two uh, variables. And for solid volume percentage, we will again use the values 10, 40, 70. And now for fiber diameter, we will um, choose the three values 1, E minus 5, so 10 micrometers, um, comma 2, E minus 5, which would be 20 micrometers, and three, uh, 30 micrometers, so 3, E minus 5. So now when running a parameter study, the macro is executed once for all combinations of values from the two lists. Um, that would be the cost product of the, two, uh, of the two value lists. So if you now click OK and click Run,
So here in this slide, we can see a 2D visualization of the resulting structures. As we had three values for both variables, the result is three times three, so um, nine different structures. We can see all combinations of solid volume percentage and fiber diameter. The solid volume percentage increases from top to bottom, and the fiber diameter varies from left to right. They all have a somehow similar structure with one fiber in the upper left corner and uh, here the two in the center. This is because all structures were generated with the same random seed uh, that controls the random numbers used for structure generation. This value also could be changed to obtain more different structures. But here we want to have a nice visualization of the impact um, from our two variables. For example, observe the single fiber here in the upper left corner and it becomes bigger from left to right with increasing fiber diameter. Also, the number of fibers increases from top to bottom to reach the given solid volume percentage. So now we go to our project folder. And because the next step um, would not be visible in the project folder, um, we delete all these result folders and result files um, that we generated now. Um, they can be reprodu reproduced whenever needed, so it's no problem to delete them. So here these nine uh, folders with the, with the two um, variable values. And now the nine result files. And simply delete them. If you now go back to the macro execution control, and highlight workshop 3, and click on parameters. So we see here on the right we have the two pull-down men menus for variation. Um, with these pull-down menus we can couple these variables. So here for example we would see the fiber diameter, and here we see the solid run percentage, and um, now we can choose one of them to couple it with the other. So if here now stands at one percentage, and then the macro is um, executed for the, only for the pairs of the uh, two variables. Um, so only for 10 um, sort of one percentage with fiber diameters um, 10 micrometers, and then for the pair, pair 40, 20, and 70, 30. So we click OK, click on one. If we now look into the project folder, we only find three new result files and result folders for the value pairs we entered in the parameters dialog. Now on this slide we see now again a visualization of the results in 2D. In contrast to the previous macro execution, now only three of the nine combination possibilities were generated which we can see here in the diagonal. That is because only the value pairs were used instead of the cross product. This is the end of part two. Um, we have seen some Python language basics as two types of text output. We've seen variables and string operations. Also, we added a second variable and we did parameter studies, one with the cross product of the entered value lists for the two variables and one with the coupled pairs. Now it's time for another break, which gives us time to answer your questions. The last part where we will see how to access simulation results and save images will start in another 10 minutes.